My name is Sophia Colette Eric, and I'm an art historian, academic researcher, and curator of multisensory experiences. Right now, my main work is with the European funded project Odoropa, which advocates for smells and smelling as important to Europe's cultural heritage. It is my pleasure to welcome you as the host of the Internet of Senses podcast for the sense of smell. And today I have Hesut Sultano with me, who has received his bachelor's degree in electronic engineering and his PhD from Kumpultens University of Madrid in Spain. He has worked in instrumentation systems at the electronics department of Computens University, in chemical sensors and electronic noses at the Sensor Laboratory for Superior Research and Investigation in Madrid, and in control, modeling, and simulation at the Naval Engineering School of Polytechnic University of Madrid. Currently, he works as a professor at the Industrial Engineering School of the University of Extremadura in Spain. And as of 2019, he's the president of the Digital Olfaction Society, whose goal is to create devices that not only record smells, but also turn them into digital data and transmit and apply digital olfaction methodologies where useful. His research interests include machine learning and pattern recognition techniques, instrumentation of measurement systems, chemical sensors, and electronic noses. And it is my pleasure to welcome Jesus today uh, after that semi-long introduction. But we're really excited to have you and discuss your work today. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. And congratulations for this podcast. I think it is very interesting to show the, the research uh, topics of different researchers to the society because it is the, one of the goals of the researchers, no? not only teaching and research, but also to transmit the knowledge to the, to the society. So thank you very much and congratulations. Thank you for saying that. And we're really excited to also have you on the podcast today. I think it's a, a new topic to discuss we ha- that we haven't discovered yet. So we'll start with talking about digital olfaction, and we'll also talk about enoses and their purpose and use in, in society. So I wanted to start the podcast by letting our audience know to note that the topics that we'll discuss in the interview today may be more on the technical side, and it's first time for me discussing these topics. So we'll be kind of discovering this all together, and I may ask Jesus to repeat things or to explain things in a different way throughout the interview. So I hope that we both and all of you as listeners will be patient with us today. So to start, you have a background in engineering, electronics, and sensors, and I'm curious how this expertise led you to research in the field of olfaction, and can you explain your personal research journey for us? Yes, the relation between electronic instrumentation, gas, and chemical sensors, and olfaction is very clear because, as you know, the olfaction, or when we smell uh, something, is uh, related with a chemical part of the detection. So as you probably know, the the smells, the scents are produced by a number of chemical compounds that are in the ambient, or perhaps they are emitted by different substances. And we detect these scents or these smells by an interaction between these chemical compounds and the olfactory receptors that we are in, inside our nose. No? So what we do when we smell something is first an interaction between these chemical compounds that are responsible for odors, aromas, scents, etc., with these olfactory receptors, and they send a signal, an electrical signal to our brain. And after that, we store this, this signal in our brain and we put a label for this stimulus. No? So we, we smell, for example, a wine or a rose. We learn and we say, this is a rose, for example. No? So when we receive this stimulus again in, in, in a similar way, we identify it in our brain as a remember. So we can say or we can affirm uh, this is a rose. We are smelling a rose. No, so this part, this this procedure, we try to repeat in an electronic way, as uh, similar as we do, for example, in in other 
imitation of biological senses, like, for example, image or sound, no? we, we try to digitalize this stimulus and we do that with uh, electronic components. No? For example, in, in the case of computer vision, we use a camera. A camera is like a sensor that detects some colors, some uh, shapes, and, and turn, turn this stimulus into a digital data. No? The, the same occurs, for example, in the hearing. When we hear something, a, a sound, we can use a microphone and we can transform the air pressure into the microphone an electrical signal. So we try to do the same, but not in a physical way, like for example, an image in which the different colors are different wavelengths depending on the color or the frequency of the sound of the wave of the sound that are the different sounds or the different voices, etc. So in this case, it is a chemical uh, sense. The biological sense of smell and the tongue are chemical senses. So we uh, transform a chemical property in the case of smell are different chemical compounds. And in the case of the tongue, we, for example, uh, transform the, the acid, the salt, the sweet flavors into signals, no? So in our case, the world or, or the topic of machine olfaction is very related or very close to the uh, sensors or the chemical sensor discipline because uh, the first device or the first component, electronic component that we need for making or for developing an electronic nose or, or an artificial factory system is a component that uh, transforms a concentration of different uh, chemical compounds into a signal or several signals in the same way that we do in our biological nose. So the first part is the detection. So we detect uh, chemical compounds, we detect uh, a mixture of gases that are responsible of uh, an odor, of the, the, the emitter odor of uh, a food, a beverage, uh, etc. In this first part, we obtain a, a, an electrical signal. What we do with this uh, electrical signal is more or less the same that we do in our biological nose. So we send this electrical signal to like an artificial uh, brain that, uh, as you probably imagine, it will be uh, an artificial intelligence algorithm or machine learning uh, algorithm or program. Sorry, and do you give the machine like a prompt for for such a case or like how what is the job of the machine then in this case? The machine learning part. Yeah, we usually program. Uh, it's not a prompt like like a chat GPT or, or different mm -hmm. algorithms or platforms. We try to integrate this machine learning part in the same prototype. So we have developed, for example, a program that have two parts. The first is the learning part. So imagine that we have an electronic nose and the first part that I have explained before, we obtain a signals or several signals from several sensors. And in the learning part, we do exactly the same in the biological nose. So this uh, group of signals correspond to another, okay? And another group of signals are clustered in another other. So we do it usually offline. So we do a lot of measurements and we uh, create a database with inputs and outputs, okay? The inputs are the signals of the sensors and the outputs are the different labels that do we put to the different others. So imagine that we want to recognize, for example, different beverages, no? So we analyze our electronic nose. We, we could analyze, for example, a beer, wine, or different liquors. And we do all the measurements and we put a, a label on each sample that we analyze. We train the neural network or the artificial intelligence with these pairs of inputs and outputs. And after that, the system is ready to recognize new others. So if we, for example, analyze a new uh, sample, automatically it will classify in one of the classes that the system has previously learned. 
So it is uh, more or less in the same way that the biological nose works. Thank you.